Hi there folks, in today's demonstration I'm going to demonstrate how you can convert a mixed case string, like the one you see on the screen right now, this is a test string with eight words, into proper case where every letter of each word is an uppercase letter. But if that's not for you, then I also have another demonstration with a sentence or two, in fact, five sentences, that again are a mixed case and this time we're going to convert that string into sentence case and you can see as we walk through this particular string we have an uppercase letter but all the other letters throughout are lowercase again there's the, the uppercase b so if that's something that interests you please make sure you watch on and if you haven't already like and subscribe but without further ado let's jump into the demonstration so here I am in Power Automate, and the first action I'm going to add is select. And what the select does is it will loop through an array. So as an input, we need to supply an array, but of course our string right now is a string. So using the expression tab here, we can actually split that string based on a space. So I'm gonna go into dynamic content here, choose my compose and put a comma, and then in double quotes, I will insert a space. Now at the moment, my string is in mixed case and ideally I'd like that whole string to be in lower case because that saves me an extra couple of actions later on. So I'm actually gonna wrap the outputs of compose into to lower. And you'll see I put an open bracket and then go to the end of my compose and put a close bracket so that we have the following expression. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna convert this string all into lowercase and then split it into an array of eight words. And then just to demonstrate that, if I switch now to text mode using this little icon here and into my expression tab, if I type in item, it will return each word as an array. Now we will come back to this in a second, but I just want to demonstrate what the output is first of all. So if I hit okay, we'll go with a save and test and we'll have a quick look at the array that's been created as a result of running this select action. So here we can see we now have an array of all of the words in our sentence, all in lowercase, and both the input and the output are the same. Now, if we go back into edit, we're going to make changes to that initial expression that I've put in the map so that we can uppercase the first letter and obviously keep the rest as, as lowercase. So I'm gonna remove that dynamic pill from the map I'll go into the expression tab and the first thing that I want to do is I want to convert the first letter into upper. So put in the expression to upper and then in order to, for, for me to get that first letter, I can use an expression known as slice. And what slice will do is it will return a string based on a starting character and then a length. So we've already seen that item will return the full word. We know that that word is in lowercase. We want to return the slice from the character zero, and we only want the length to be one. So that will return the first letter from our word in uppercase. Now, we want to concatenate this with the rest of the word. So I'm going to now insert concat at the beginning of our expression, and you can see there it's recognized we have our first string. If I go to the end of the expression now, I can put in another comma, and all we want to do is perform another slice Again, on that item, because we know that's the full word, but instead of our starting position being zero, we want the starting position to now be one. And we don't need to add a second comma here for the length, because ultimately we want it to return the whole of the, the word, the rest of the word. So the other thing to do here now is put a closing bracket, hit the OK button, and that will now return us an array of proper case words. So the last last bit here, just to finish off this sentence, is to insert a compose. And of course, we have an array at the moment. We want to return the proper case sentence now. So we can just call this compose sentence. We'll go into expression. We can use join, which brings together all of the values within our array. Jump onto our dynamic content to select the output from our select. Insert a comma and then the join is gonna be based on a space like you see there. And that will bring together those words from that array that we've created to form our proper case sentence. So we'll go ahead and hit okay, and we'll put this into test and check out the output. 
So here we are in the output. If we have a quick look, we can see this is a test string with eight words, with all of the words being um, an uppercase letter at the beginning of the, each word. And if I go into the select, we can see the input here is based on that split where all the words have lowercase letters. But then in the output, you can see that all the words here have the uppercase based on that concatenation that we did with the first letter and then obviously the rest of the word in lowercase. So the next use case is to have a look at putting a string into sentence case and I just so happen to have an example here. So here's my string, it's an absolute jumble of upper and lowercase as we can see and the aim is to turn this into sentence, ca sentence case so that the first letter of each sentence is an uppercase letter. So it's slightly different here, last time I split on the spaces, this time I'm going to split on full stops and a full stop with a space. So this is quite uh, niche, it will only work if your uh, sentences are properly formatted with a space or a full stop and then a space, but I thought I'd demonstrate it anyway as it might apply to your particular use case or something that you can adapt for your own use. So like before, we're gonna go in and add a select and then within our select, of course, we need to split again. So we'll use that split expression. We will again use two lower because we want to convert the string into lower. So I'll choose my uh, compose string. And the split, of course, is going to be based this time on a full stop and a space. So you can see at the end there, I have a full stop and a space. So I can hit okay, put that into text mode again, and we can then build out our second expression. So our second expression is actually exactly the same. So if I was to jump across into my select from before, I can go and pick out this concatenation here, control A, control C, and I can jump into this map and paste that in there. Because ultimately all we're doing is setting the first letter of this string into uppercase, and we can now hit okay. Then finally, I'll add another compose. Of course, we'll do a join, but unlike last time, rather than joining on a space, we'll be joining on a full stop and a space. So again, I'll type in join. I'll choose this time the output from our select two, put in the single quotes with a full stop and a space, hit the okay button, and we'll go ahead and have a look at the output. So again, if we have a quick look at the select, you can see here we have all five of those sentences, all in lowercase in that input. If we then look at the output, we can see the first character of each of those sentences is now in uppercase. And then of course, if we have a look at our final output here, we can see that we have the uppercase letters at the beginning of all of our sentences. So the last thing I'd like to demonstrate is just a bit of formatting. It'd be quite interesting to add an incremental number in front of these five sentences and maybe stick some return lines as well, because as you can see at the moment, it's not very easy to view and visualize. And if that was going into email, it'd be nice to have some formatting in there. So if we go back into edit, and what we're gonna use now are a couple of other expressions which you might not have seen before, and I think they could be quite useful. So in a new step, I'm going to add a select, and in order to generate the numbers from um, one through to five, we're gonna use an expression known as range. So range will generate an array based on a starting index and then a count, i.e. a number of numbers within that range. So at the moment, I know that there are five lines, but we can use an expression known as length, which will actually check and return the length of an array. And we know that we have our array in the select two. So this will help us determine the length is five and we'll get an array of numbers from one through to five. Then if we put this into text mode again, we're going to use concat. And with concat, we're gonna to bring together both the string from our select action and the number that we've generated as part of this range. So concat, if we insert that there, we can then put in the expression item, which will get our numbers, one, two, three, four, five. And then you're probably thinking at this point, okay, how are we gonna get those different values from our select at the top here? 
Well, we can query them via an integer index, which you might have seen before in some of my videos. If I go into dynamic content, we can go and select our select to output. And if I put a question mark and some square brackets, I can actually insert a number, for instance, number zero, because our integer index starts from zero, and that would return the first object from that array. And of course, number one would be the second object, but we want that to be dynamic. So we know already that the expression item is going to return to us a number, but that number starts from one and our integer index starts from zero. So this is where we can use the expression either sub or add. I'll use add in this case here, and I can put the number minus one and then a close, uh, close bracket. And of course, that will then recalculate the number that goes in this square brackets. So we're starting from zero and this is completely dynamic. So as it loops through all of these objects, it will get each of those uh, individual sentences. So if I hit OK now, and then I'm going to onto a new step, and I'm going to add a compose. And the purpose of this compose now is to add a couple of return lines. I've literally gone into that compose, and I have hit the return line on my keyboard. In fact, I've put two in. Maybe you'll only need one, but we'll leave it as it is for now. My next step is to add another compose. And this is just back to the same as we had before. We're going to perform a join. So that join is going to be based on the output from our select three in this case, if I go and pick that there. But rather than using something in single quotes like a space, this time I'm going to use my compose three and that will allow me to then insert those um, return lines. So there we go, insert the compose three, hit okay. Now if we go ahead and test this, what we should see is all the sentences with a number prefix, and then of course, a return line between each of them. So if we look at the output, here we have it. We have our numbers, one, two, three, four, five. We have our individual sentences on each line. It would be nice to also introduce a, maybe a, a full stop, a period, and a space between all of these. If you go back into edit, it's pretty straightforward. We can go into that select three, go into the concatenation, and of course we can go and insert another string which includes that period and a space and then another comma and that will bring all of those strings together so if i hit the update we'll test it make sure we've got the desired output and i think we'll call it a day so back onto that final compose you can see now we have that extra bit of formatting in place all of those sentences are prefixed with a number one two three four five and they're all on separate lines thanks to that compose that simply just has a couple of return lines in it. So again, hopefully quite a few new expressions there introduced and uh, lots to learn. I'd like to hear if uh, you've enjoyed this video, any feedback or comments, feel free to drop me a message. And if you haven't already, please make sure you like, like and subscribe and I'll see you again sometime soon. Thanks for watching. Cheers.